Welcome to the Sonoma County Library's uh, book mending video repair series. And today we're going to step it up and we're going to do what's called uh, easy covers. These are um, called easy covers, as you can read. And um, so we just say E Z covers. And they come in a whole variety of sizes from small to super large. And uh, also in order to be able to use these, you need a handy dandy um, Capco product called Easy Trim. And the other thing you're gonna need is a way to mark them. And I swear by this particular Sharpie, it's an ultra fine retractable you may need to use a bone folder or a paddle. And then I always like to have on hand uh, some type of trimming device in case I measure incorrectly. But I usually try not to measure incorrectly so that I don't need to use any of these. And I try to put them on so I don't need to use this. And so I end up only using this and this. And then lastly, I forgot to show you, um, if you do get a, um, a bubble, which I have a method that I do where I don't get bubbles or air pockets or something, this is what we would use. It's a little push pin. So you would just push that into and then uh, get the air out and then seal it. Okay. So the purpose of easy covers is placing a plastic coating over the entire book cover. And we're going to show you how to measure, how to cut, and how to apply the easy covers. And uh, we're going to do it on brand new books, and we're going to do it on old books because we understand a lot of branches have been changing their yap and jp collections to juvenile fiction or ya fiction and we do recommend that you easy cover the books um, since you're putting them into a different collection so uh, let's get started so the books have a front and a back Duh. So, <laughs> so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your easy cover is going to fit. And uh, I already know that this size will work for this size book. And uh, they come in various sizes. And I think I already broke the seal on this one. This one is three by four width and then eight and a half by five height. So they have the printing on one side. Uh, but during COVID, the company informed us that they uh, cannot print this side. So the newer ones that are coming to us are just completely flat so you're just going to have to be able to feel the difference between the two sides so um, this one that doesn't have this big flap this goes on the back of the book this is the front so the easiest way to remember the difference between the front and the back is the front has a flap so front flap and the back doesn't now this flap side is the one that always faces towards the spine of the book. On this one, as you can see, there is a little strip that peels off here. That one always faces the spine of the book. Okay, so let's get started measuring. I always measure the back first. And you always want to make your marks on the paper side that pulls off, that has the adhesive underneath. 
So the easiest way to measure, and believe me, measuring is extremely difficult, but I've narrowed it down to quick, you know, a quick way of doing it. So you always want the strip that faces the spine to be about a half inch to an inch from the edge of the spine. So as you can see here. Now, the measurement for the width is what I will call forgiving. In other words, if you're off by a quarter of an inch, fourth of an inch, something, it's not gonna make a difference. The measurement that is the most important is the length of the book. That has to be exact. So I start out by taking, making sure the spine is facing me, making sure the part that's going up to the spine is facing me, and I make a mark. I pull it towards me, I move it over to the side using my fingers, I line it up and I make my next mark. It's very important that you don't try to line it up like this because you know way you're gonna see the book, so it's really important you have it sticking out so you can make your mark. Okay, I flip it over, I'm gonna do the same thing on the front, but in order to line it up, I need to flip my flap. So I'm gonna flip my flap because that is what goes, the flap is what goes around the spine. So this is technically the edge here. So I put my edge about half inch, three quarters of an inch, I make my mark. And again, this is forgiving. If you're off, it's not gonna matter. I then pull it towards me, move it to where it's lined up, I make my next mark. Okay. Now we're gonna cut. As you can see from these, each one has two marks. So if we cut this one off first, then we lose our mark over here. But I'll tell you now, if you've ever done easy covers, that's probably the first thing you're gonna do because it's just natural. So I take my cutter, now my cutter lifts up like this. This is free floating. And it go, you have to make sure it goes up over here. I'm gonna show you. You wanna make sure that when you're cutting, it's up over here before you press down on it. Because if you're here and you press down on it, you're not gonna cut the entire thing. Okay, so the first cut we do is this one. And each cutter is different. So you'll want to do one book first so that you know where the, um, how it's calibrated. I've done a lot of cutting with this, so I know how it's calibrated. So I know that in this little groove here, if you can see there's a little groove here where it cuts, I know that my mark has to be just to the right of the middle, okay? Can you see that? And then I, of course, I make sure this is all the way over here before I press it down. And then I do it like I mean it. And then I swivel this. And again, I cut it. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. And again, I know where my perfect fit is. And also, one of the things is a lot of times after you've done it, this is sitting here. I don't try to move it. I let it do the work. Because if you end up going like this, it's, it's you know, it, I just trust me, let the machine do the work. Okay, so we're over the edge here. So I can go ahead and make my cut. Again, this is so forgiving. I don't even bother to line it up. I just get it as close as I can. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna show you enough, a couple more times. Cause like I said, when you start doing this, it gets very complicated. 
I'm going to do a little bit bigger size. Aha, here they are. <clears throat> so this is the next size up. And as you can see, it does not have the etching. So you have to feel it to know which side is the one that is papery. Okay, so I'm going to take, again, the back. The back, which doesn't have the flap. And I'm going to take a front, which doesn't, which has the flap. And I'm going to take a very unusual book, and I'm sure you've seen this before where it has this whole thing. What we like to do with these is we like to just go to the edge of this. We don't bother to try to do this because that's actually the inside of the book. So I'll show you when we come to measuring that. Again, I take the back, I find my strip, my strip's going to go about so on the back of the book. I'm going to make my first measure. I'm going to pull it toward me so I can see the edge of the book. And then I'm going to line it up with that side. And then I'm going to make my mark. Okay. I'm going to flip my book over. And you're probably wondering why I measure because the front and the back are usually different and you don't want to have to get into using any of your cutting tools to fix it. So on this one, I take and I flip my flap over. This is the paper side where I'm going to make my mark. I've got it about an inch. Now I'm going to make my mark here instead of at the edge of the book because this is the edge of the cover. Okay, and then I'm going to pull it towards me. I'm going to line it up. I'm going to make my next mark. And again, so important that you don't cut this first. There's a natural tendency to want to cut that one first. I don't know why, but it happens to all of us. And so this one is exacting, so I need to make sure I get it lined up good. Make sure I have to move this over and then press it down. On this one's forgiving, so I don't really worry if I'm off a little bit. Again, I know just where my mark is. And then the other thing that's most important that I didn't mention is is that you get it flat up against this edge here and this edge here so that you get a nice straight cut. Now I always want to make sure that this is starts from the very back before I push it and cut it. I flip my side around and like I said I'm not don't care about accuracy on this one because that is the side that's forgiving. Okay. And I'm going to do one more because I know it seems repetitive, but it really is, uh, it's a visual. I always start with the book, the back of the book. I take my back, I find my strip. The strip always goes facing the spine. I leave about an inch. I make my first mark. I pull it straight towards me so that it, this part you can see, and I move it over to the edge. I make my next mark. I flip my book over. I flip my flap so that the paper side, again, I need to make sure I can see where to make the mark. If you try to do it there, how are you going to know where to mark it? I do my inch, I make my mark, I pull it towards me and so I can see the edge of the book, I line it up, I make my next mark. Okay, so I'm going to do one more cut and then we're going to do application. Okay, again, always make sure you start
cutting with that one. I This one has to be exact so I know exactly where my groove is. You'll want to practice with yours to see. Might be to the right, might be a little bit to the left. Boom. As you can see, each time I'm allowing the machine to just naturally do its thing. Okay, so in the next part two of easy covering, we're gonna work on applying the cut easy covers. See you in a few.